Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Olivia Lesla. I'm the Medical Director for Healthy Ambition. Welcome, we're talking about resveratrol today. Phytochemicals, of which resveratrol is one. Phyto meaning of or related to plants. These are produced when a plant is exposed to injury or stress, attack by bacteria or fungi, or exposure to UV radiation. They help the plant thrive. And it has been shown to be quite beneficial, not just to the plant, but to the animal that winds up consuming these phytochemicals. There are many ways to classify phytochemicals. For the purposes of this video, we'll use the one that generally categorizes them according to the chemical structure, which gives us three main broad groups. One are your terpenes or terpenoids. An example of this would be beta carotene, which gives carrots their orange color. Two, we've got the thiols or the sulfur containing compounds. The strong smelling allicin from garlic is a thiol. And three are your phenols. And this is where resveratrol comes into play. Resveratrol is a type of polyphenol and it is found in the skin of grapes and hence wine, but also in cocoa, peanuts, and related berries like blueberries, cranberries, um, and lignin berries. In 2017, a review of clinical trials actually showed that the bioavailability of resveratrol was really low because it metabolizes so quickly. Since then, bioenhancers and nanotechnology have really shaped things up a little bit more to make resveratrol more bioavailable. The other interesting thing is synergism with other phytochemicals. So for example, consuming resveratrol with piperine, which is the active compound in black pepper, increases the bioavailability of resveratrol by a thousand percent. As well, consumption of resveratrol with quercetin, another phytochemical, increases the bioavailability of resveratrol. Quercetin is found in red grapes and in apples, for example. Resveratrol is known for a number of beneficial properties, including antioxidative, anti-diabetic, neuroprotective, cardioprotective, the list goes on and on. The bulk of studies on resveratrol are actually in vitro, which is Latin for in the glass, or in animal studies, in vivo. And they're not necessarily in humans, so you have to take all the information that comes through with a grain of salt, because it may not necessarily translate. In medical school, my lecturers were very firm in telling us that the information we were reading in textbooks is at least five years old by the time it's published. There are plenty of biohackers out there, like Tim Ferriss and Scott Laidler, who make sure that they're ahead of the curve to keep you informed. The kind of early research that got everybody excited was when they fed fat mice resveratrol and improved their health so much so that they lived as long as healthy mice and had no cardiovascular issues. On top of that, when they added resveratrol to calorie restriction, they saw lifespan on mice longer than they had ever seen in any mice before. Calorie restriction in humans decreases insulin, decreases glucose, increases insulin sensitivity, and these metabolic changes are really important because they're closely linked with longevity. Resveratrol-treated mice had better memories, less fatigue, better mobility and coordination, and they actually had a transformation of their ordinary muscle fibers to slow twitch muscle fibers, that of elite athletes. How does resveratrol affect all these actions? Resveratrol has a multi-target approach, activating multiple enzymes and proteins like sirtuin. Sirtuins are genes that increase longevity. There are seven of them in humans, and there have been many, many recent studies to confirm foundationally that sirtuins are responsible for aging and longevity in humans. We're delving into resveratrol because resveratrol activates sirtuins and has a lot to say about our health span and our lifespan. It does appear that the resveratrol level in wines is highly unpredictable, very volatile, and it changes from region to region, grape to grape, producer to producer. It can contain up to 5.8 milligrams per litre, and they do say that Pinot Noir is the varietal that is the best. We do not recommend consuming red wine for the sole purpose of resveratrol. 
because the harms would far outweigh the benefits. In fact, sprouted peanuts has got more resveratrol than red wine. If you're gonna drink red wine, drink it because you love it.